Today, I'm gonna to save quite a bit of money while saving the planet, just a little bit, while fixing my mate's motor so it's safe to drive. And it's a brilliant opportunity for us to learn about remanufacturing. As the slogan goes, reuse, not refuse. So my mate just dropped off his Fiesta at my workshop, clearly assuming it's run as an independent garage, rather than the very exclusive and well-equipped procrastination space it actually is. He chucked me the key and said there's something wrong with the brakes. Oh yes, and don't spend too much fixing it either. Cheeky git. So what's the problem? Clearly the lights on the dashboard must have given him some kind of clue. But what does that actually mean? I mean, the manufacturers go to some trouble to put the lights into the dashboard, so maybe we should actually pay attention to them. Like most modern cars, this Fiesta is fitted with ABS, or an anti-lock braking system. Unfortunately, a typical problem on this car is that the ABS stops working. In this case, the car is still drivable, but should I need to stop suddenly because, I don't know, a moose was to jump out in front of me, I would stand on the brakes and then I would skid ungracefully into that moose. Back in the day, cars were simple with few electronic components, or in this case, even electric components. In fact, this is one of the first cars with an electric start. But that meant, of course, they were much simpler to diagnose and to repair with a simple set of tools. Modern cars like our Fiesta here require specialist diagnostic equipment that you plug into a phone or to a computer so you can actually talk to all the electronic boxes within the car, find out what's wrong with them, find out those fault codes and then actually fix the problem and then eventually delete those fault codes. So to work out exactly what's wrong with our Fiesta, I now need to plug in to the OBD2 socket. So on this little Fiesta, it's just underneath here. Now, having established from the diagnostics that it's the ABS module that's at fault, the next thing I obviously have to do is actually remove it from the car. Now, on this particular model of vehicle, it's relatively easy to get to. You can see it's just down there, just attached to the bulkhead. And obviously, I don't want to mess with the pump. I think it is just the module itself that's at fault. And of course, we're going to have all of those hard brake lines that are attaching that to the rest of the vehicle. I don't want to mess with any of that. I don't want to have to re-bleed it or anything else. Now, I think I probably could get the module off in situ. I mean, there's only three screws holding it in position. Of course, you then you've got the wiring loom as well. But I think just to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to remove the battery and the battery tray, just get them out of the way, because as usual with these things, longest is often quickest. battery supply, so we've got some 12 volts, just in case there's any memories that might forget something critical. It's not always necessary, but it makes sense just to be on the safe side. of a faff but obviously now I've got loads more room to play with and I can actually see what I'm going to be working on which is rather good and you can see that this ABS unit is like the module which is the black box on the back is being held on by three bolts that are just there there and there you've also got the wiring limb of course and actually the whole thing the pump itself is actually attached with three more screws that go underneath so it's probably going to be the easiest thing to try and take everything off 
so I actually get a little bit more access because what I'm worried about is the fact that the module obviously has got, you can see those brake lines just behind it, it's going to be restricting its access a little bit, but hopefully it should all come apart nicely and hopefully none of the bolts will shear or get stuck or kind of start getting chewy because that'd be a real pain. So, the wiring is disconnected, the three screws that actually hold our module to the ABS pump are disconnected and also the two screws that hold the ABS pump to the rest of the car are disconnected. So now it's all nice and kind of floppy, I can now hopefully try and get that module off the back. But there is going to be this kind of probe or this sort of pin in the middle which will make it slightly harder because you can see you've got these hard brake lines on the back that are going to restrict access. So let's see what happens if we can angle that a bit more. There we go. <laughs> slide down. There we go. Oh, it's not looking bad. A little bit fiddly, but there we go. This is our ABS module. You can see that is the kind of the probe a bit that made it slightly harder to kind of remove away from the back of the pump. And you can see all these nice little coloured coils. And of course, essentially, they're the coil of each of these solenoids. And of course, the module is basically turning these on and off. That's moving valves in and out. And of course, you've got your pump. Your ABS pump is actually creating a pressure and this is actually then directing that fluid to give you cadence braking when you obviously stand on the brakes and your ABS kicks in to avoid moose or elk or whatever other thing, cyclist perhaps. So it's actually stopped you from skidding for miles. It actually helps you control your skid. So as you can see, it's a really important part of your car's safety system. So we need to make sure that it's working. Now, unfortunately, because this one is defunct, we need to chuck that in the bin. Or we could be a lot smarter about it because actually a new one of these from Ford is going to cost about £2,000. It'd be much better if we could save a whole load of money and save the environment a little bit as well by getting it remanufactured. And there's a brilliant company called ACtronics who will do exactly that service for us. And it's only going to cost us just over £200 plus the postage. Now it rather depends on kind of whether you're an independent garage or whether you're actually an individual as to how you go around the process. But basically a garage would register as a service centre. As an individual you'd go on the website to find one of those service centers garages and then basically once you've done that they would do the work they would diagnose the problem they would sort out the part and once they'd found out the bit that was wrong they would then basically put it in a little package package it up nicely and then send it carefully over to AC Dronics who would start the remanufacturing process
and then after about three to five days, including the postage, then AC Tronics would then send that part back to you, ready to fit back onto your car. Now, the really interesting thing is that actually, not only will it be resealed with all the parameters correct original specs, but also any known issues will be sorted too. So your remanufactured part will be as good as new. So now we've got our new part, we can pop it back into the vehicle. Right then, our remanufactured part is now back in position and of course now the car is actually going to be safe to drive because the ABS should be working all over again. But not only that, we've saved the planet a little bit by reusing a part rather than just discarding it and even more importantly, I've actually managed to save my mate about £1,800 in parts, which is quite the saving. And even better than a second-hand part, you actually get a two-year warranty from AC Tronics as well, so it's just a great way to keep a car on the road. Now, before I do my test drive, the next thing I need to do is just delete all those DTCs or diagnostic trouble codes. And once they've been cleared, I can go for a bit of a test drive and make sure those brakes work. Well, I think it's fair to say that the ABS is now working an absolute dream. I've saved my mate a fortune in parts, so I'm going to have to stitch him up on the labour rate. Wonderful. Ah.